with you coming on the show, we put a poll on our social media handle in honor of Tony Stewart being on the download. We want to know what your favorite smoke sound bite is. Do you have some samples of those for the fans? Oh, oh yeah, I listening? mean, of course. Okay. It, you know, uh, you know, for the people listening, you could still vote until Wednesday, oh. so uh, that's a oh. kind of a cool thing. But the racing definition one, we'll roll that one first. Is there anything that NASCAR or the IMS can do to create a little bit more passing uh, in these races? Because since '04, there just hasn't really been a lot of passing. Look up racing in the dictionary, and tell me what racing says in the dictionary and then look up passing in the dictionary and tell me what passing is. We're racing here. So I, that's all I'm going to say. This is racing, not... If you want to see passing, we can, we can go out on 465 and we can pass all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Good and one. And then, of course, um, Mike Massaro. I think you wrecked at Daytona, and, and this happened. How much does this affect your chances of winning the 500? I, I don't know, rocket scientist. I mean, I'm <laughs> sitting with a backup car. What do you think? If, if we wrecked, if, what, what chances do you think we have now, dumbass? I mean, come on. <laughs> and then uh, this oh one was God. after the second Brickyard win. I remember uh, standing next to you for this one. I thought this was cool. All right, you win again at the Brickyard. Tony, can you put this one in comparison to the last one? This one's for every one of those fans in the stands that pull for me every week and take all the bull from everybody else. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I, we could play these all day long, but that Talladega one, this is, uh, you know, Tony always gave us crap. Mike Arney's going to have a heart attack oh, right now listening to this because this, like, literally puts him back in therapy. He has to go to therapy for <laughs> well, he's three or in four this. weeks. He was in the this. Talladega oh, one. Yeah. He was in the background, and he was, like, keeping that straight face. Sorry we couldn't crash more cars today. We didn't fill the quota for today for uh, Talladega and NASCAR. If we haven't crashed at least 50% of the field by the end of the race, we need to extend the race till we at least crash 50% of the cars because it's – it's not fair to these fans for them to not see any more wrecks than that and more tore up cars. I mean, we, we still had over half the cars running at the end, and that's, uh, it shouldn't be that way. I don't think any of the wrecks were an overheating issue. That's why I say I don't, I mean, I think we ought to just tape them off solid and run them until they blow up anyway. I think it would make it a lot more exciting for the fans. If we don't crash half of the field by the end of the race, they, you need to, they really need to extend it because, I mean, that's what, that's what the fans want. They want to see that excitement. It, it would have been a lot more fun if I could have got caught up in one more wreck. If I could have done that, it would have been perfect. I mean, I think if we could make it a figure eight, it'd be perfect. Oh, my God. Uh, see, NASCAR's made the adjustments. We crashed all but three cars yesterday. <laughs> the formula's your working. Advice. The formula's working. Oh, and That's of course, a, uh, uh, the the best one so far in the, the whole <laughs> thing. I know we're all crying here. Well, Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little s runs us clear down to the infield. He wants to b about everybody else, and he's the one that drives like a little b I'm going to bust his ass. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> oh my god you know what that just reminded me of it remind it reminded me of aj foyt at nazareth talking about jeff andretti it oh, sounds almost that. it almost sounds to a t identical to aj foyt yeah. i was so mad at joey <laughs> joey had a real big habit at that time of just absolutely running you all over the racetrack and he literally ran me down to the grass where nobody had been all day at that part, you know, because we would all go down to the apron at start finish line at, at, at Fontana, but this was clear by the end of pit road, and I picked up so much stuff, and we were we were like, I don't know, fifth and seventh or seventh and ninth on the restart, and I finished twenty fourth. I lost so much time yeah. in that first lap trying to get tires cleaned back off to go. I was so mad. I was more mad at my own crew guys that were from. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember which team it was, Danica's team or Ryan's team. But I had Joey hemmed up, and I knew I knew where my guys were. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm way far away. They can't get to me. I didn't even think about my other teams, and one of them were about three spots away from where I had Joey hemmed up. I'm like, I got his ass now. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to dot his eye across his tee. We are gonna we got this. And about that time, the big fuel guy grabs me by the collar and pulls me back like I'm a rag doll. And got, his or got yours? Mine. Uh, Your his, guy. Yeah, I got you. guy. And I, I couldn't whip my own guy. Like, no, no. Hey, that, hey that. not because not out of principle. I mean, it's sure you could try out of principle, but this guy was there. I couldn't whip him. Yeah, There's the, no way. The, he, <laughs> he had he had me covered eight ways from Sunday on that. <laughs> is that is that your uh, Jack Hewitt moment? You think? I mean, Jack's got the the. You know, when you look back now. Yeah, run that sound bite. No, <laughs> run that sound bite here. <laughs> yeah, that that probably is my. Uh, that's the closest thing to my Jack Hewitt moment was there. I, I was just so mad about it because it's like, daggone it. When we started, we got taught. We got taught etiquette, and and if you didn't do it the right way, you got dumped and you got part. You know, you were sitting there at the wall trying to crank your car. You had enough time to figure out why you got wrecked and what you did wrong, and and then they'd come after the race and tell you 
this is why I did this. This is this is what you weren't doing right. And then the the every new generation that keeps coming in, there's less and less of that etiquette. Yeah. And they just race you like an ass. And it's like it's hard to sit there when you've been taught a certain way to do it and from your peers and then all of a sudden new guys come in and they just like no, we, we aren't, that's not the way we do it anymore. But even, you know, I think the day that I finally said, okay, I got to put this out of my head that this is how we do things anymore was when Jeff Burton was like, they just, we just don't race like that anymore. They don't, nobody races like that anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, if Jeff Burton's saying that, then it's, you better just give up the idea that this is going to get fixed because it's not going to get fixed. And it's, you just got to figure out how to adapt to how we do it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can top those sound bites, man. <laughs> oh, I, 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 there, there are way more. There are way more. Yeah. I mean, there, like, there is the, an the, encyclopedia. The, the of, oh, geez. Yeah. And we, and we like thank that. you. I know that. No, I don't, right. Yeah. Yes. Like, you're it, a national hero absolutely. for this. <laughs> a treasure. I'm telling you. Don't confuse bravery with <laughs> no, stupidity. No, right? I'm telling you. I'm, it's, oh, well, do you regret any of them? Oh, God, yeah. You do? Every really? Sunday like, night and Monday morning when Mike Arning's ripping my ass about <laughs> it <laughs> and says, now we got to do four days of media to, to get the sponsor to not be so PO'd about it. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, there, there's a lot of time. You know, and, and that, that's what's so great about our sport, but it's also something we're losing in our sport, too, is that yeah. I was just, there was that raw emotion attached to it. I was just thinking of a great idea. So they sent me and Mike to talk to these young new kids coming into the sport at the beginning of the year last year. Yeah, last year. What did they call that? Well, it was the NASCAR. It was like all the rookies of every series in the NASCAR next. I don't know what they called yeah. the the summit or the seminar. Yeah, it was like a seminar summit. Whatever. Yeah. We were going to give them some tips on how to how, how to handle themselves. We said, just watch Tony Stewart. And I think, everything he said, he does. I think that Tony should be the guy. He should, right? Actually, running those. Yeah, it'd be easy. I wouldn't need very much time. I would just say, grow some balls and say what you <laughs> think. Well, as a broadcaster, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. That's right. Because, yeah. see, now his whole outlook on life has changed now that he's on the TV side. All right, start another poll. Okay. And, and ask people if they like these vanilla drivers. Lee is on it. And see and see <laughs> and see will. what they think about yeah. that. See if they like this politically correct BS that, yeah. that what would we're you all dealing yeah. with. Now. Leah, so like what would you prefer? Would you prefer I mean yeah, seriously. Leah's like, I prefer you not now, ask me this crap right she's now. She's literally doing it. But <laughs> but I'm gonna make a bet. They're gonna say they, they want the colorful Tony Stewart type drivers, but yeah. they also reserve the right to get pissed off at them when they do something. Yeah, and especially yeah. The driver that's doing the randing, the fans that don't like them have 100% ability to sit there and be keyboard jockeys. Right. But they won't sit there, and if they were face-to-face, -face, they wouldn't have the balls to sit there and say what they say on a computer to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We see that day in and day out. Yeah. Because the, the reason I say that is because you'll be somewhere, and somebody's buddy will be right. They'll they'll both be right in front of you, and this guy will go, my buddy said this about you. And he's just standing there and look at you, and he does not have the balls to say it in front of you. Yeah. Uh, that's just the way He's it is. backing up. He's why? trying to backtrack. That's well, society, wait, well, you know what I meant. As yeah, many, exactly. As, yeah. as, as many of these gold sound bites Tony Stewart gave, I wonder why there's not any social media altercations that you've had. Because you just stay you, off You of just it? realize that it's like there's nothing to gain. Because it's you're you're fighting a bunch of guys that are spineless that sit behind a keyboard and and they run their mouth and you're fighting a bunch of people that it, that well, it's just not even worth I fighting this, anymore. I think this goes back to when you said Tony Stewart would go to you after y'all had your altercation. I think you just prefer to deal with it man to man, don't you? I mean, well, like, but it's, and that's something to appreciate. But is it's it, respect too. I mean, yes. the reason you're willing to go to somebody is because if if you don't even respect them, you don't even care to go to them and and talk about that's it right. or have an no altercation about it. You know, the guys that I got in some of the biggest fights with were guys that I had the most respect for. I mean, everybody remembers when I threw the helmet at Matt Kenseth on pit road. Well, I love Matt Kenseth. I mean, I think the world of Matt Kenseth. And at the part of the race where we crashed into each other, it's like, it was stupid for us to wreck out at that point. We both had really fast cars. And and I was like, same thing. I mean, I had ran him down from a half a straightaway. It's like, why why not just let me go? Yeah, You know I'm going to let you go at the same time. And that's why I was so mad about it. It wasn't because I was just mad at Matt. I was mad at the situation we were in and the fact that I'm like, why of somebody that's that smart and so good at this that's that's what I was mad about. Yeah. So it's I don't I don't get in these social media rants because it's like it, I don't even care about these people that sit there and don't have the balls to they can sit there and say what they want. They're people that don't at the end of the day they don't matter to me. And what have you gained I don't, at I don't the end of the see day? them. Yeah, I don't see them. They don't interact with me personally. I don't interact with them. They are not worth the energy and my time to sit here and 
getting a pissing contest on social media with them over something that just doesn't matter at the end of the day. And it gives them their 10 seconds of fame on social media because all of a sudden they're, they, they got in an argument with somebody famous. I mean, it's, it's just not worth glamorizing them. 